Hey friends, I'm at a little national forest area in Virginia, and if you notice, there is firewood. Courtesy of the camp host, they have put firewood at every campsite. You don't run into that very often. Okay, so we spent a couple of days at a place called Raccoon Branch which is part of Mount Rogers. And people not from this area think that Mount Rogers is one mountain and one campground, maybe. So when they call for information and talk to people or try to look this up online, they don't realize that this Mount Rogers place is a large area. And it has several campgrounds under different names and they can be 10, 20 miles apart from each other. This particular campground only has 20 camp spots. So it's pretty small. It is all on one loop here. There are a couple of buildings that do have flush toilets and sinks running water. They do not have shower facilities here. This particular park will run you $16 a night. It will run you half of that if you are retired or you are disabled and you have the National Parks Pass you see me talk about in other videos. If you want or need an electric hookup, I think that is about an extra $6 here. But anyway, the point is it's very budget friendly. When you get into this area of Virginia and Tennessee and you're dealing with state parks, you're easily going to be $25 for dry camping, $35 and up for electrical hookups. So if you're spending time in this part of the world, if you can get into the national forest, national recreation areas, you're going to pay about half of what you are bouncing from state park to state park. The little hiking trail, which you saw me at the little bridge a moment ago, there is a little loop that goes around there. I don't know, maybe a mile, if that. And then there's a path that cuts off from that and I think that is maybe four miles that runs up to an elevation of about 4,000 feet here and gives you a pretty nice view of the surrounding area, the surrounding community. Now, if you're going to be at Raccoon Branch, you are just off of Route 16 in a place called Sugar Grove. There is nothing in Sugar Grove except a couple of convenience stores and there is a Dollar General store to get supplies. You are only about two miles from that. This park is right off of Route 16, so you're not doing a lot of driving back into the woods. And you are about 12 miles away from Marion, Virginia, which puts you on Interstate 81. And from here, you are about 30 miles away from Interstate 77, where it crosses over Interstate 81. So I've had a lot of people ask about parks in my neck of the woods here in the east because so many people on YouTube, including myself, spend a lot of time in the West. So off and on for the next little bit, I'm going to be hitting some of these parks around here and describing them and letting you know exactly what you, you have to deal with and give you an idea of what you actually have here for camping. But what I want to talk to you today is about experiences and interactions because if you talk to people who travel very much and you start getting into travel stories and what have you of all the things they've done there's generally three things they remember they can tell you something about some breathtaking view they saw somewhere which is great but generally what they remember is interactions with animals wildlife and they remember interactions with people. And on every trip that I take, it ends up being the same way. When I think back about a certain trip, my best memories or first memories tend to be the people that I met along the way. And to give you an example on this trip, because there haven't been a lot of people around where I am, but last night, late, three guys came in from Germany. What happened, I walked back to my van. They were setting up their, their tents and, and what have you for the night. 
And I just walked over politely to one of them and I said, hey, I just wanted to let you know I'm going to run this noisy generator for about 10 minutes in order to make some coffee. Uh, would you guys like, like some coffee? Said he would and he turned around and he hollered at the other two and they hollered back. So I went in and made coffee, brought it out, set it on the picnic table. They come over. It turns into a nice long conversation. They wander back over to their website to make dinner. They invite me over. We sit over there for a couple more hours. So we ended up three or four hours just sitting and talking about different things. Things about Germany, things about here, things about where they were going to travel to. Those are the kind of things I guarantee when I look back on this month longish little journey that I'm on in this area, that's what I'm going to remember more than the parks or a tree. It will be those interactions with people. On these trips the last few years, I have met and hung out with people from Australia. Out west, I have, we've hung out with retired ranchers. We had a nice dinner one night with a Native American and learned just all kinds of things about the different tribes in that area of Oklahoma. People from just all walks of life, from 20 years old to 80 years old that we've met out here and camp host in, in different areas and the places they've been to. And that that is a lot of how you learn things. And you will learn things about an area that you never knew. And you will learn a lot about people. The point I, I'm after is if you want to talk to somebody, you know, don't force it, you know, be nice, offer something, be friendly, you know, invite somebody over. If they take you up on it, fine. And if they don't take you up on it, fine. Maybe they just don't like you. Maybe they just didn't like me. Or maybe they just want to be alone. Maybe they've been out hiking all day and they're tired. Maybe they just, again, want to be alone. And always remember that is their right. If they're not in the mood to be sociable, that's okay and that is their right. But by being a little bit outgoing and maybe a a little more outgoing than you normally would, you'll be amazed at the amount of people that you do meet and interact and, and have some long conversations with. Now, I heard another YouTuber in a video once say that, you know, what, what they're able to bring you is about 5% of their day. And that tends to be about right. I, I would agree with that statement. You know, I don't record everything. I don't have a camera out all the time. There are places I go to that I don't film. There are people I meet that I don't film. I have done a couple of interviews that are kind of, kind of interesting. And sometimes those people don't want to appear on camera, but they will agree to let me record them. Some people don't mind being on camera at all. And some people just aren't interested in being on camera at all. And whichever answer they have is absolutely fine. But like last night with my interaction with these people from Germany, I know I could have grabbed a camera and I probably could have talked them into it. And, you know, it would have been interesting, I'm sure, to bring you a couple of minutes of that four hour conversation but I just didn't want to do that. That was kind of my time and my reason reason to be out here on this trip. So I hope everyone will understand that, not just on my channel, but maybe any other van life travel channels that you see. We, we just don't want to try to monetize everybody that we interact with when we're out traveling. Or at least I don't. As a matter of fact, my conversation with these three guys and the long conversation I had with the camp host here before that, it never came up anything about me being on YouTube or having a channel or whatever. Maybe I need some business cards to give out. So if you go down to the description or you go down to the pin post in the comments of this video, you'll see several other recent videos that you may be interested in watching for different aspects of what you are doing or may want to do in the future. And you'll also 
see the link to that one about the national parks passes if you haven't watched it yet and you really don't understand it's so complicated and there's so many parts to it but there's so many benefits to having one of these national park passes that depending on your situation can range anywhere from zero to eighty dollars a year but even at eighty dollars a year if you're a working stiff if you use it in the right way, it's going to more than pay for itself. So make sure you watch that one if you haven't done so. And we'll see you next time.